Okay, so this is a tr this training is so that you can learn how to do virtual sets, multiple camera angles um, with different backgrounds, as well as foreground objects in the virtual set. We're going to start by uh, selecting a few different background images for different camera shots. Um, I'm going to use existing still images that I have um, for my camera angles. Um, you know, you'll replace those uh, still sources with camera sources when you're using the system. So, um, let's go into my stills folder and we'll use this still here as one camera shot. And we'll use some, um, maybe a different camera angle. Okay, we'll use this one here. So we've got a couple of different shots. And, okay. and we'll do. Um, couple different backgrounds. So where you see frame store one and frame store two, these will actually be your camera shots, say like one and two. Um, I don't I don't have any cameras uh, connected to this, so I'm going to use stills. Um, as far as your backgrounds are concerned, um, we'll just use some different still images here. Um, I'll use this guy. These would be your uh, virtual sets. Correct. Correct. Let's see. So. I have to do lock. I put the picture. I have to lock it. Um, for your backgrounds, you should lock them. Yes. Now I'm locking I'm locking these two stills because they're my foreground these are my actual key images. Those will actually be for you. They'll be over here on your key bus, key one, key two. Okay. So for me I'm I locked those because I don't want to accidentally load uh, anything over them. Okay. How many I can add? Um the Software supports uh, up to seven soft buttons. So if you wanted, for example, okay. if you wanted to make another frame store, you could right click and say create frame store, and it would actually make another frame store for you. Okay. So I'm just grabbing some different images here. Uh, let's take. Let's take this image here and put it on four. So now these will be my four or my backgrounds. So let's go ahead and key out this guy. So now I'm sitting in front of the White House, or I'm sorry, the Capitol. And uh, you know, we'll choose this guy to be over uh, that. Now I need to adjust my keyer a little bit. Okay. Correct. You have to adjust the key manually. Okay. I mean there is a uh, yeah there, I mean there is an auto set button in it's best to, best to do it manually. Okay. okay. So now, if this were a virtual set, I'm definitely in, in front of this object. Now, if you wanted to have the object be in front of you, what you have to okay. what you have to do, Miriam, is you have to lift that object out. In this case, it's a submarine, and then you have to make it a down. You have to make the object a downstream key. Same thing would be true for the capital, I mean, the, uh, yeah, the capital. I'd have to lift that out and make that a downstream key. 
and that would look some it would look like this if I go into my sets folder here I believe that's been done so here's the downstream key that was lifted out and when you run it you can see that it's in front of the object It, yeah, as a downstream key, yeah. So it's a it's a it's a combination of things. You've got your key bus, which is your you know it would be your live camera source, which in this case is okay. this picture, uh, and then your background image, which is a frame store, and uh, that that would be on the program bus, and then your element that would go in front would be uh, you know the DSK. So here, I'll show you another example. I'll show you another. Correct. Exactly. Here's okay. a here's another example. So when okay. I tr when I turn the downstream key on, the object goes to the foreground. And when I turn the downstream key off, it's in the background. You see that? It's it's actually yeah. it's actually just a still. Okay. And what's the format for this one, for DSP uh, one? Like, uh, uh, PMP is okay, PSP is okay. What, what, what kind of format? Okay, good question. Um, you would want it to be either a Targa or a PSD. Uh, PNG would work as well. But the key is, uh, when you bring the uh, object in, you're going you're gonna to open that object in the either character generator, which would be the easiest. You know, you'd bring your object in here, and then save it out as an overlay. So I'll just show you a quick... Yeah, so let's just pretend for a second that, uh, that this image here is the image that you want, the part of the virtual set that you want to show up on top. Okay, so you'd bring it in. Uh, make sure when you make the object that you make it uh, 720 by 486. You know, the whole okay. the whole image actually, not just the piece of it, but the whole image needs to be 720 by 486. Okay. okay, and then you just save it out from here, and it'll automatically create the file type you need if you save it as an overlay. So I'm going to drag and drop that out, and so uh, it's, where is it at? It's, uh, uh, right here. That's the file that I just saved. And so now if I were in the, vir if I was in the switcher and I wanted to run that as my uh, virtual set, I would just navigate to where that is, which is in bins, and load it up. and it shows up on top. So it's the same thing it's the same thing basically as this. Okay. And that's all there is to it. Yeah. Yeah, I just double clicked, but you can drag and drop. Oh, okay. And, uh, and this one. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, okay, I got you. Now, to make things a little bit more interesting, if you wanted to automatically have the foreground show up, um, what you would do, I'm going to use this one since it's actually the correct one for the image. is you'll end up using the lock button. I'm going to turn the fade off. I don't want the fade to be on. You don't have to worry about that. It's just part of the effect. Okay. So now let's say, Miriam, that I want to go from, you know, this image with this background uh, to this image, I'm sorry, this image with this background. 
but I want the object to be in front. Okay. What I would do is I would be on this image. I would select the other image in preview and the other image in key preview. Okay. So this would be camera one. This would be camera two. This would be background one. This would be background two. Now, by, by turning on lock, what that does is it locks the cut button and the auto button together. So auto, auto is going to run this graphic, and cut is going to cut to the other object that's on the key preview bus. So let's go ahead and see what happens. So do you see how it did the cut and it automatically has the DSK running right now? Okay, now let's say I wanted to go back to the other camera shot with the uh, capital in front of, you know, the talent. What you would do yeah. is while you're on this shot, you would load your next uh, downstream key or your next foreground image and then hit auto again. Correct. Okay. But I have to click the DSK one, the yellow button. Yeah, you. Right. You have to. You have to. Now, if I want to go back to that other shot. I could either go and choose and load this again by dragging and dropping it, or I could just right click on this and choose the other one that I want. So you're just going back and forth. Correct. So three things are cha yeah, three things are changing here. Your camera is changing, the background is changing, and the foreground is changing. You, you can have as many angles as you, uh, well, I mean, I guess up to seven different angles loaded simultaneously, but, you know, it would be the same thing. Instead of choosing, you know, number two as your preview, you would choose, you know, say number three or four or five, you know, and then choose, you know, you basically just keep doing what I'm doing here, just keep adding more frame stores. So let me in in keep review, I have to choose which one I'm going to go next. Like number two, number three. Yeah. I just click on it. Yeah. And Correct. Yeah, you just, so in your case, it would be a little easier because you would know camera one, camera two, camera three. So it would be like, ah, uh, shit. Uh, 